What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. So today we're going to make a short video, but I feel it's going to be pretty educational for some of our new uh, miners coming into the scene. And today we're really going to talk about server power supplies being used for mining. And I get a lot of questions in my comments on exactly how these guys work. So let's kind of discuss it a little bit more. So this is our mock little bench setup here. Uh, this is kind of our, this is our classroom setup, guys. Let's put it that way. So this is your traditional PC setup. So you have your motherboard, you have your video card, your CPU, your memory, and your power supply, as well as your hard drive. So let's say this is what your mining setup looks like right now, okay? So you have an ATX power supply. This is a 750 watt, just for an example purpose here. And we have a 24 pin running into our motherboard, as well as for this little old school motherboard actually uses a four pin that goes back to our motherboard. In addition to that, we have our SATA powering our solid state drive. And then we also have SATA running from the motherboard to our hard drive. Now you may actually run Hive OS or Windows on a thumb drive or even run it on solid state drive, but either one works. So then you have your graphics card. This is the Sapphire Pulse RX 580 8 gig card that we're currently using for this example today. So this is maybe what you're used to. And as soon as you start to talk about, hey, I'm gonna add more cards and I'm gonna expand past just one slot here, a lot of people get thrown off. So I wanted to go ahead and discuss it in more detail. So this is an HP server power supply. So this was pulled directly out of a server and it was recertified or somebody went ahead and tested it and said, this thing works now, you're good to go. And then it was resold uh, out there. All of these are used. You're not finding new one of these anywhere. This is a 1200 watt power supply if it's on 240 volt. If it's on your traditional 120, then it's only 900 watts. So pretty much this came out of a server. Traditionally, there's two of these side by side for redundancy, and it integrates with the server uh, motherboard via the slot. Slides in, click, and you're good to go. So what miners have started doing is we've said, okay, I don't want to spend three, four, five, six hundred dollars on a 1200 watt ATX power supply that's modular and power all my graphics cards. I want to spend forty dollars and get a 1200 watt server power supply. So the reason that we've gone with the, uh, not with an ATX and all of my builds, we've gone with the server uh, power supply is from a cost perspective. So we have several of these. So we can see we have one here. We have one over here, we have one down here, and we even have another one farther down there. So uh, that is this explained a little bit, okay? So that's the server power supply. So server PSU and ATX. Okay, so let's say you got multiple cards now, and you're gonna go ahead and get into we're using risers and also getting into, you know, having multiple cards here. So let me go ahead and swap around our configuration and I'll show you kind of what that next step looks like. Okay, so this is probably the next step that you're taking. You may have two of these cords, one going into one slot and one going into another and you're running two cards. So you have your PCI adapter card running into your USB 3A uh, and then mail side and then coming into your riser and then going into your card. Then what you do is you have a six pin cable. This six pin cable powers the riser only. Okay? So now our next step is our power supply. Well, instead of running this back to our ATX power supply, we're gonna run two power supplies. One for the motherboard, which you don't need 750 watts for motherboard. You could run like 350 or something simple. So now over here, we want to go ahead and power that riser. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. Okay. Now what this breakout board does, they're cheap, 15, 20, $25. It takes the power coming in here and just splits it into what do we got here? 12 different ways. That's it. That's all that does. 
all that does is take power coming in and split it 12 different, all, 12 different ways. It's no different than the power coming into our ATX and splitting it into multiple different ways. So now you have to power the card. So we're gonna go ahead and take another cable and we're gonna put the six pin right in here. Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug this into our card. So let me go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so we've gone ahead now and put a power cable from our breakout board and into our card. Okay, so this is it. This is all you need here. So we could have a second card plugged in here and then we could also have it going into a riser, you know, another card sitting here and then we could have another two slots, one running to the card, one running to the mother, or running um, to the uh, riser. Now, some cards actually require you to have another pin. See, this one only has one eight pin. Some cards have two eight pins or two six pins. So the nice thing is, is these c uh, cables that you can get, and I'll put a link in the description, guys. Um, these are a six pin to a six plus two. So that allows you to have eight there, which really works well. So this at a very high level is how you could wire up, you know, if you're just getting started and kind of, man, how do you use these server power supplies in mining setups? This is exactly how you do it. It's not overly complicated. Now, some tips and tricks. Let's say we wanted to power this on our mock setup. You always want to come over and there's actually a white power button right here. You just press it. Okay. Uh, right here. Okay, we would you hear a click there, it turns on, and it'll let your cards turn on, it'll turn on the riser because it's providing power to the card and the riser. Always turn these on maybe 10 seconds before you come over and turn on your ATX power supply and power up the rest of your rig because you always want the riser and the GPU to be fully powered and showing up on the motherboard before the motherboard boots up and shows that everything is available. Other than that, guys, that's basically it. Uh, it's not overly complicated. These are becoming harder and harder to come by, not necessarily the breakout boards, but the HP power slices, everyone's eating them up. I actually was given a tip today and I wanna give kudos out uh, to the community. They recommended looking at, if you guys do have 240 volt, which I'm excited, I do have that, Dell has a 1400 watt that the breakout board hooks up to perfectly. And so there's a lot of those out there for sale as well. So lots of different options. Well, guys, if you guys are interested in the HP power supplies, if you're interested in the breakout boards, maybe these uh, six to eight pin cables or the risers that I'm using here, I will put links down below so you guys can find everything that you guys are looking for. Other than that, guys, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more educational videos like this, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.